Okay, so welcome to our seminars. Uh, today we have two wonderful talks, and uh, this is the IU Ukraine Non-Residential Scholars Program, and I am very honored to present our first speaker, and that is Dr. Mariana Levitska. Uh, Dr. Levitska holds a PhD in art history, and she has her habilitation in Ukrainian history. She's an associate professor in the Department of Graphic Design and Art of Books of the Ukrainian Academy of Printing in Lviv. And Dr. Levitska also works as a part-time senior research associate at the Department of Art Studies of the Ethnology Institute of the Ukrainian National Academy of Sciences in Lviv. She teaches courses in art history, in history and theory of graphic design for bachelor's and master's students. Her research area includes art studies and visual cultural studies, focusing on the response of Ukrainian graphic artists to warfare and war disasters. Dr. Levitska is also interested in the modern reinterpretation of traditional Christian iconography due to the challenges of war in Ukraine. And her uh, talk today is entitled, The Visual Thesaurus of War, Artist Response and Experience. So Dr. Levitska, welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you, dear Sarah, for this brilliant presentation and uh, introduction. And uh, let me to share my presentation. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes, oh, it looks wonderful. I hope this is okay. So the topic of my presentation is the visual thesaurus of war. Um, Thank you. First of all, thank you for, uh, for uh, thank you. Uh, I am uh, very grateful being the part of this brilliant research project uh, uh, for this academic year. And I'm really very grateful for all colleagues uh, in United States and Ukraine here who uh, I'm really happy uh, being accepted to this to this project. Uh, every war has its uh, own visual imagery in artworks, caricatures, photographs, films produced to bear witness or to cope with traumatic experience. Since the first days of Russian invasion with its horrible disasters and threats, we have witnessed a real boom of visual artifacts, printed or digital, uh, encouraging military and civil resistance in Ukraine. The purpose of the presented project is to discuss the diversity of Ukrainian graphic art depicting the war with an interdisciplinary focus, combining the methods of visual culture, uh, studies, visual anthropology, or, and art history methods, such as connection between word and image as a sample of renewed iconological approach. I suggest discussion the images that already have a wide and diverse iconography, image of the enemy, image of the defender, military and civilian ones, rethinking of the historical figures and images of the victims of war crimes and disasters. Uh, a few words about sources and methodology. I would like to mention the book War in uh, 140 Characters by reporter David Patrikarakos, in which he noted that in the 20, 21st centuries, many wars were initially started as virtual, as wars in the mass media through constru uh, constructing and replicating images of the enemy, which prepared the basis for the next real armed invasion. Also, Patrick Caracos defines uh, participants of the la latest wars as homo digitalis, confirming the impact of social networks and electronic resources in spreading and damaging agenda, the damaging agenda. Also, the formation of a concept of internet lore, internet folklore as a form of popular culture responding to Russia's war in Ukraine should be mentioned as a new phenomenon of modern digital culture. For example, it was discussed by Olesa Naumovska in the presentation uh, entitled Paradigm of Genres of the Ukrainian Internet Law of the War Themes 2022. So I use some of her considerations in my presentation. 
Different online databases documenting events and evidence appeared during the two years of war for in Ukraine also in, uh, also uh, could be named as the so main sources. I want to mention some of them. Uh, Lviv Center of uh, uh, Urban History start the project documenting experience of war, which includes four di directions, such as testimonies, visual documentation of the war, telegram archive and diaries and dreams of the war. Uh, also, Museum of Contemporary Art, art which exists only in virtual form, initiated the wartime art archive. Art and Cultural Agency Projector, in collaboration with a Telegram magazine, made outline database base of creative posters. Uh, I can also mention the project's Artists Support Ukraine, Art Group Pictoric, as well as the exhibition at the Frontline Ukrainian Art 2013-2019, which was part of a large-scale project that combines exhibition, film program, and discussions curated by Svetlana Bedarieva and Hanna Dikun. Visual sources include select, selected works of famous Ukrainian artists, amateurs, and sometimes anonymous uh, ones as artworks that apply typical patterns or unique imagery. Despite uh, uh, a considerable amount of collected visual data, most of them deal with the external narrative of war. These are evidence against the crimes committed by Russians, photos and videos that show various persp perspectives of the war, everyday life, infrastructure, culture and heritage, etc. Graphic artworks responding to this current narrative are ephemeral and flowing. Nevertheless, they construct durable visual structures rooted in the collective consciousness. Thus, my project is mainly focused on the imagery of the war, which is formed and transformed by artists who resonate with Ukrainians' internal attitude on the one hand and the external media narrative on the other. The research is also based on various sources besides the visual ones, literary sources, uh, documentary or biographical and theoretical publications were involved. Among the published materials are the special issue of the Telegram magazine Creative in War, uh, books by Ukrainian and foreign authors such as documentary uh, anthologies, analytics and bi biographical stories. Therefore, the analysis of the artworks using the interdisciplinary approach will invariably oscillate between the anthropology of the image, studies of visual culture, and the theoretical models from the field of art history. The anthropology of war itself questions whether terrorism is rooted in culture or religion, or whether it is just a manifestation of disrespect of identity for identity, which leads to alienation or othering from ideological ethics on certain communities to, to genocide of whole nations. Such global issues could be raised when we refer to some particular images within the field of visual culture. Although war is defined as culturally sanctioned violence, acts of violence can be uh, perceived as both horrific and heroic depending on who does and who views these acts. Recent graphic images also actualize a set of decolonizing questions. The further aspect is a rapid and inevitable instrumentalization of the art for propaganda and counter-propaganda during wartime. This art tends to be persuasive because artists not only express their position, but include social agenda, relations between politics and art and between society and art, often using the popular culture patterns. Um, Integral portrait of war includes not only combat encounters, but first and foremost, its actors who embody the opposite forces, aggressors and defenders. Analyzing artistic responses of Ukrainian artists and illustrators to the war for in Ukraine 2022-2023, I can notice that their topics and images often fit into the visus scheme Wars became welfare disaster in which one of the main uh, antithesis is the opposition of the hero defender versus the enemy or aggressor, which inevitably reflects the image or concept of the victim. The image of the enemy as a certain ideological construct is being formed in the public uh, consciousness through the support of existing national stereotypes and becomes relevant in, relevant in a period of social tension or collective danger. Uh, 
Indeed, to fully recognize the hero, the historical dialectic comes into play. It is necessary to, uh, it is necessary to face the villain or evil. There are many studies on the uh, prerequisites and uh, the uh, consequences of the formation of image of the uh, enemy and, uh, and researchers who wrote about the nature of hostility emphasized different aspects such as private fears, prejudice and tensions between nations or communities. Uh, for example, John uh, Stashak emphasized that the creation of the image of the enemy is similar to the process of othering through which the dominant uh, quotation, the dominant group as constructs an excluded uh, or removed group of them, others, through the stigmatization of differences, real or imagined, presented as a denial of identity, thus motivating potential discrimination, the end of quotation. Depicting political figures who affected the beginning of the war, its course and its consequences, uh, Ukrainian graphics focused on Putin and the Russian leadership as the image of the enemy as such, which become the personification of aggression. Thus, Putin, as a distilled incarnation of evil, has absolute priority uh, in his role in war. However, until now, some Western commentators tried to separate Russian society from Putin and his state apparatus connected with aggression. On the contrary, from the very beginning of the full-scale invasion, Ukrainians were convinced that behind Putin's mask stood the majority of Russians who actively or passively supported aggression and murders. This is exactly the method that Ukrainian artists are trying to convey, depicting all Russians as a collective Putin, as an impersonal or even irrational force called Russism or Russists. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, as in these posters of Max Palenko being Vladimir Putin. Depicting the image of the enemy, many artworks accuse the Russian political top of being a successor of the totalitarian communist regime, with, uh, which was not uh, condemned. These historical references are evident in many graphic posters, such as Alexander Rivika's series The Red Thread, what is the idiom in Ukrainian language, the main theme of the narrative. The artist showed portraits of the tyranny. Among the anti-hero figures of the Ukrainian-Russian war are the political and media figures uh, also can also be seen, uh, Lukashenko, Minister Lavrov, and other war criminals. Dismantling the common religious narrative, artists often blame figures uh, of the top of Russian clergy, such as Patriarch Cyril, for example. Following the Versus scheme, I have to compare a depiction of Ukrainian political and military top, such as President Zelensky or Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Force of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny. Uh, I uh, will focus on the motivating or heroic images of these actors. Ukrainian graphic artists also actively make President Zelensky an iconic figure as opposed to Putin. Using the visual culture approaches, in particular Nikas Mirzoev's uh, notion that modern life takes place on screen, I can argue that many images are product of this screen culture and media, becoming the negative or positive personages of graphic art. The media component is quite noticeable in the iconography of Zelensky, who is used to reincarnating and conveniently trying on different images earlier or rather different personages. He is represented in digital graphic mainly as a movie or comics hero. A cursory analysis of the public pre-war Ukrainian discourse regarding Russians, despite the event of uh, covert aggression and the annexation of Crimea in Donbass in 2014, did not contain uh, an excess of anti-Russian statements or images. Ukrainians, both polit politicians and society, generally did not construct the image of the enemy in contrast to Russian politicians and society who purposefully dehumanized Ukrainians. Therefore, it seemed that Ukrainian artists were forced to create this image of the enemy after the invasion. However, the aggressor himself contributed to the um, 
immediate formation of the image of the enemy, shocking Ukrainians and the world with all possible types of crimes and violations of moral norms. The more reports about the atrocities of the aggressors appeared in the information field, the faster the artistic imagery shifted towards images of evil from the arsenal of mass culture, from movies, uh, excuse me, I missed one, one slide, very important, uh, from uh, shifted um, toward images of evil from the arsenal of mass culture, from movies or comics. It is as if the plots of horror films have become real in everyday life. This is shown by the image of the zombie in most of Mikhailoscope graphic posters, for, for instance. I also have to note a particular sense of humor in Ukrainian artists who often make satirical or grotesque images of the enemy too. The other side of the current enemy imagery in Ukrainian graphic is the need for decolonization realized by Ukrainians at the beginning of the war. This need was distinctly expressed through the cancellation of Russian culture. Uh, since decolonization means dismantling the colonial narrative, as Svetlana Bidariva and Alison Lee notice in their contributions, it was relevant to identify the main pictorial symbolics of this colonial narrative to collect a conventional set of images that can be recognized as potentially decolonizing, uh, to finally assimilate the past. An uh, echo of these efforts are the artworks of Max Palenko, an image of the Russian uh, Empress Catherine thrown from the pedestal, or his portraits of Russian writers of the past in camouflage. The author himself recognized this cancellation as a very important personal art jest. This cancellation started at the beginning of the war as a response to the spreading of the Russian world idea. War with the monuments and images of Ukrainian classics whose monuments were purposefully destroyed by the Russians, uh, as Shevchenko in Borodyanka, a lesser Ukrainka monument in Crimea, and so on. These monuments, selected as a target, became the visual evidence of cultural genocide in the direct official definition proposed by Rafael Lemkin and approved by the civilized world. Thus, my following consideration is focused on the iconic historical and cultural figures as markers of national identity, as heroes or motivating persons. During what time we experience the actualization of images of Prince Volodymyr the Great or Ukrainian poets Shevchenko, Lesa Ukraine, Ivan Franko, and others acting as iconic figures, representative and recognizable, widely considered to epitomize community, nation, or country, very famous or popular, especially being considered to represent particular opinions or essential and core ideas. Regarding the selection and recontextualization of these figures of the past, the following research questions can be asked. Who became an iconic figure during the war? What are their new connotations? Do narrative or symbolic structures dominate? Is the historical durability preserved here? I want to give as an example the image of Prince Volodymyr the Great, who is an important and contested iconic figure for both Ukrainians and Russians, as it has been shown by Yaroslav Zatiluk in his brilliant November presentation. Although Vladimir Putin recognized Prince Volodymyr the Great as his patron, he avoids admitting the trident, the coat of arms of Volodymyr and the state emblem of Ukraine. Here it is uh, worth discussing how uh, this, his image is used to break all connections with modern Russia. Artist Oleksiy Chekal called this process a, a quotation, a battle for our names or a process of the reappropriation as a restoration of historical justice. Sure, artist Volodymyr Yarmolenko is not so familiar with the essence of historical research, but he intuitively could convey the main message. On his poster of March 2022 calling the defense of the Ukrainian capital, Volodymyr the Great is depicted as a well-known Kyiv monument. Besides, the artist used the art model of biblical David, but with the head of the defeated Putin, not Goliath, as another iconic image common to the shared European cultural field. Regarding the reception of the figure of Volodymyr, Ukrainian society is consolidated in contrast to the figure of Stepan Bandera, for example. 
Bandera's activities as a leader of the national movement in the 20th century had different evaluations, but his reception as an iconic figure was unwittingly demonized by modern Russian propaganda, which treats any manifestation of Ukrainian identity as Nazism. Meanwhile, in Ukrainian graphics, it is not the image of Bandera itself that uh, acquires ironic characteristics, but rather its external perception by Russians and foreigners who see every Ukrainian as Bandera Nazi. How Oleg Billy and Alexander Grechov reframe him uh, as a pop uh, image uh, here on these posters. Discussing the new iconic figures in the recent Ukrainian graphics, I would like to single out Ukrainian classic poets whose uh, images have shifted from classic, uh, classics to pop culture. Uh, two artists contributed to this even before the war, such as Kiev street artist Sociopath and graphic artist Alexander Grechov. The Sociopath interpreted Shevchenko and Lesa Ukrainka rethinking the rebellious spirit of Ukrainian poets who criticized Darism as new revolutionaries of the Kiev Maidan of 2013. In return, Grechov shifted Shevchenko toward pop culture in 2019 uh, to interest young generations. After the invasion, these iconic figures not only encourage and support, but also set connections between past and contemporary visual representation of resistance, extending connotation between the past and today, between the colonial trauma and the actual decolonizing agenda. Uh, talking about the historical durability, it is essential to mention, uh, to mention also the Cossacks as a historical image of the Ukrainian warrior and uh, defender, who actively appears in recent Ukrainian posters or uh, on uh, war topics. These mostly impersonal images are clear references to the historical memory and experience of past armed conflicts. This image of a warrior in the Ukrainian historical memory can be considered an image that denotes freedom uh, uh, or aspiration of li to liberty. After the final liquidation of Rus by Russia of the Ukrainian military Cossack structure called the Poriska Siege in 1775, these images remind the idea of state independence. In Ukrainian art, the range of the image of Cossack warriors is wide enough. From the burlesque but powerful uh, Anatoly Basilevich's uh, graphic illustration to, of Eneid of 1968 to the dramatic and expressive images of Serhii Yakutovich, uh, these symbolic and pictorial types became archetypal images with a characteristic appearance, particular elements of stuffing, and specific traits with Cossack's ironic attitude toward death as characteristic that have quickly recovered nowadays. For instance, the poster with the commander of Ukrainian armed forces, Valery Zaluzhdin. The theoretical frames to substantiate these symbolics are quite wide, from the academic publications of Serhii Pluhi as historical debates and territorial claims, Cossacks' mythology in the Russian-Ukrainian border dispute, uh, to uh, Lilia Berezhnaya article, How to Drown an Enemy, to the words of uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Force of Ukraine, General Zaluzhny, in the preface to the anthology entitled Martial Law. Uh, Zaluzhny writes, martial law is not only the legal regime of the state's existence during war, it is also a reminder of the Cossack state, a military camp that became a fortress during wars and battles. Last year, our entire country turned into such a state, an invincible fortress over which the blue-yellow flag uh, flies. I'm sure that thanks to the courage and professionalism of Ukrainian soldiers, thanks to the unity of Ukrainian society and with the friendly support of our partners in the world, this fortress will re uh, regain all its territories. The end of quotation. Thus, Cossack images appear in many posters embodying the idea of duration and continuity of the Ukrainian military and state tradition to construct a new shared historical memory, such as an image of Zaluzhny himself with Cossack figures in the background here on this poster. Some of these posters are marked by self-reflection or self-irony, for example, in works of my Max Palenko, the soldier of uh, 
Ukrainian army plucking a two-headed chicken, preventing these examples from excessive pathos, as well as the interpretation of images of war through the prism of humor, uh, plays the role of psychological salvation from gloom and hopelessness. Finishing this, blocks, I, uh, this block, I want to cite Umberto Eco's uh, notion, uh, quotation, having an enemy is important not only for defining one's own identity, but also for having a reason to test our value system and demonstrate it to the others, end of quotation. Uh, moving to the image of defender, individual and typical, it is natural that for fighting Ukrainians, the image of the defender is primarily their own, worthy of honor and heroization. Indeed, the image of the defender closely corresponds to the image of the hero, brave, courageous and capable of sacrificing his life for a higher goal. But this is a certain distinction. The image of the defender has more connotation to the specific context of time and place. He is inscribed in the historical narrative, although often not even mentioned by name. These are the features that distinguish the works with the images of Ukrainian soldiers, defenders by Mikhail Skop, Irina Rezhanenko, and many, many other artists in which the defender is closely related to the archetypal image of the father, at once uh, courageous qualities and such virtues as kindness and caring. The defender's image is sometimes expressed through the camouflage as a visual exponent of military activities. At the same time, the camouflage of the enemy differs from the camouflage of the defender. It hides, covers, and makes it invisible to the aggressor. The symbolism and pictorial features of camouflage, which is the typical sign of military used in the work of Alexander Tanasiuk, Alina Yakubenko, and even in this unknown uh, poster of unknown author. Uh, the power of art is also objectivated in heroizing, uh, hero, uh, heroization, ordinary and previously unknown real people once shown in TV reports. Two uh, dramatic examples can be given, defenders of Azovstal uh, in Mariupol and uh, soldier Alexander uh, Matsievsky. Yesterday, his sculpture in a hyperrealistic style was established in Kyiv. Defense of Mariupol by Azov Regiment became a powerful message of many posters and artworks which were immediately shared on social networks. These are real people almost transformed by the media and social context into legendary epic heroes. Uh, posters by Alexander Zavadovsky, Mikhail Skop, and other artists. Azov Stal in Mariupol provides an example of the formation of new historical memory as a common memory of Ukrainians rooted in a painful experience. In constructing the image of defender, the influence of personal experience often plays an important role too. This war is a personal, individual war, and the suffering of his relatives or fellow citizens which are superimposed on the uh, evaluation of the figure of the hero. Civilians such as doctors, requires, and even artists or IT professionals also became heroes. Such samples of poster graphics and digital illustration include the works of Beata Kurkul, Evgenia, Irina Romashka, Evgenia Poloshina, and others. The true face of the war uh, was sharply shown in media reports about the execution of Ukrainian soldier. It is obvious that this no single case became a media explosion because of the last words of the deceased, glory to Ukraine. The um, person of unknown soldier was uh, established quite quickly. His name was Alexander Matsievsky. His rank and image documented in the footage and photo agencies inspired artists to repeat, to repeat, strengthen and highlight over and over again, which is the reverse side of the screen culture. Matsievsky is going down in history as an iconic image of a Ukrainian soldier who uh, despite his death. It is also revealing that all the positive features of our defenders are completely demonized by enemy propaganda, strength and courage frightening them, uh, while uh, fairnesslessness and uh, regarded as a conspiracy with dark forces, etc. 
In the external interpretation of images, this is manifest manifested through a grotesque exaggeration of tattoos, stereotypal uh, accentuation of external uh, unattractive features, deformations of proportions with a tendency of, to emphasize physical defects, caricature, etc. The next topical block is devoted to victims. War for acquired the image of an ideal hero with whom everyone wants to identify. However, being a victim, nobody wants to identify themselves as, uh, as such. This experience will be easier to recognize in abstract, distant form of an artistic image. For the enemy, the image of the victim remains a trophy, but for the defender, the image of the victim is evidence of the crimes of the aggressor. The scale of destructions and crimes in Ukraine is so large now that victims can include not only people, but also domestic and wild animals, uh, lands and rivers, uh, pictorial landscapes, cities and houses, cultural monuments and books or museum rarities. However, many artists personally experiencing war disasters take it upon themselves to document this chronicle of war by portraying real victims of suffering as a participant of current project, artist Irina Vorona with her diary of war, uh, or focusing on the uh, fate of refugees or the destruction of the environment. In the analysis shown, victims are mostly depicted as civilians, especially women and children, or elderly people who are frustrated or even experience physical violence, injuries, and loss of loved ones. Representation of victims correspond with the violence. The theme of violence evokes images of women and children who suffered from the consequence of war. Especially the images of children victims of war are one of the most profound and dramatic images in Ukrainian graphic art. Addressing the idea and image of the victim, I, uh, I am finishing now. I have a few minutes yet. Uh, addressing yes, you do, the, you do, Mariana. Yes. Yes. Addressing the idea and image of the victims, artists search for an emotional expression of the common drama of man and country, and they need to convey this drama to the international audience based on mutual cultural patterns such as Christian imagery or even cult or even cultural stereotypes. Unlike ephemeral digital pieces, which are distributed via social networks and even printed posters or small flyers, both exhibited in galleries or stuck on the walls, uh, more substantial graphic projects are emerging, such as Volodymyr Stasenko's graphic installation Agnus Dei. This project was created in April 2022 before Easter and was rooted in the graphic of Ukrainian religious books of the 17th and 18th century, presented on large scale banners using silk screen printing technique. The project was exhibited in various cities in Lviv, Madrid, Rome, Vienna, Budapest. In particular, a specific exhibition design was created in Lviv where an uh, amorphous uh, tattered black object was installed in the space of the classical museum atrium, embodying the idea of war as chaos in the center of orderly Europe. Inside this amorphous structure uh, hung uh, giant graphic banners. Stasenko's cycle combines two symbolic narratives and two formal techniques, images of Christian sacrifice and redemption and images of sh uh, shelling victims and exiles. The, uh, and the graphic linearity of religious schemes flows into stylized pixeled reportage photos of the war. Uh, in this presentation, I thought to show a critical perspective of Ukrainian graphic art during the war and to start a discussion about the artistic vision of war, its forms and its content. The selection of works uh, was uh, the most difficult part of the process because it was important for me to show certain images that could make the framework of the visual dimension of the work. To conclude these preliminary uh, observations about imagery of the war, a few main aspects can be distinguished. The selected works addressed to the same topics are in complex dialogue both between the artists themselves and between artists and society, a dialogue that is possible thanks to internet platforms. 
This graphic art, both printed and digital, as a medium of resistance, got an effective political and social status during wartime. We can witness how Ukrainian posters transform from the empty rhetoric of political uh, slogans to becoming a weapon of defense and resistance. The presented material makes one thing about how Ukrainians position themselves in the war, what priorities they choose, and what historical social parallels they focus on. Simultaneously, Ukrainian graphics go beyond the documentary recording of events. This project has an applied purpose and involves students and teachers of the Graphic Art Department of the Ukrainian Academy of Printing too. It is being developed to bring together a comprehensively illustrated analysis of wartime Ukrainian graphic design drawn from exhibitions and did it digital databases that exemplify the diversity of visual responses. Analyzing actual Ukrainian graphics, I can say that the iconic figures have been used actively as powerful and significant images. Many artists admit that this war is not quotation, a war between countries for their territory. This war is again the post-Soviet complexes of our neighbors. Many artists call it the battle of outlooks and archetypes, conflicts of ideas. Such a position influenced the potential of rethinking and reframing many of the fixed patterns as well as using traditional imagery too. too. Thus, Ukrainian graphics of what time solve various tasks, broadcast a civic position, discover one's visual heritage, working with the decolonization of the visual field, and offer an individual author's language based on shared historical memory. And I uh, may uh, end this presentation with this um, quotation from Svetlana Bedarieva that battles in the cultural field may seem somewhat marginal, but they are ones that have the most lasting effects. Uh, thank you for your attention. I have finished. Dr. Levitska, thank you so much for this wonderful, really rich presentation. So much food for thought here. And I'm sure that uh, folks will have questions and comments for discussion. So please, let's open the floor for uh, questions or comments. Maybe uh, let's we, we can stop sharing your screen so we can see everyone a little better. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So please, colleagues, what feedback, questions, comments do you have for Dr. Levitska? Yes, Titiana Hranchak, please. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much for this uh, inspiring, amazing presentation. I enjoy it very much. Um, and uh, of course, I have questions. Uh, my first question is about uh, methodology. Uh, actually, not methodology, but the sample of your resource, uh, your research. Um, I would be grateful if you can give us more detail about uh, as a principle you followed in creating this sample. You uh, told about uh, a kind of famous artist uh, and typical examples. So um, I'm interested, how did you de determine the degree of well-known, who, who is well-known and who is not uh, so well-known? And um, about the um, these typical examples, what exactly is typical, and what is not? How how you define it? Uh, this is my first question, and my second question is about images. Uh, actually, uh, in particular, image uh, of uh, defender, because um, are you? Um, told about this camouflage as a sign but um i don't know uh, maybe um could you uh, did you uh, notice some um uh, i would say internal characteristics of um, uh, this image of defender for example uh I, I would say that uh, pretty typical uh, were 
I met a lot actually, um, is image of our defendants uh, as uh, kittens. Our kittens, our cats, uh, when we see cat in uh, this uh, uh, military uniform. But cat is pretty kind of domestic. So uh, the image of defender um, became kind of home. Um, and uh, um, maybe uh, through this image, we can speak about uh, some humanity because uh, it's close to us is uh, these images are peaceful um, despite this military uniform the image uh, uh, itself uh, looks peaceful so what could you uh, say about internal characteristic uh, uh, what can be your conclusion about internal characteristic uh, of uh, the image of defender? Thank you. Thank you for your uh, big <laughs> questions. Uh, uh, about the first question, uh, it was not. Uh, it, it does not matter the famous uh, of uh, artist. Uh, is it? this artist is famous or not famous uh, because uh, the the main uh, the first step was to collect the the my personal database of these images the our uh, within our academy within our department students helped me uh, to collect these images and we uh, were discussing it. Uh, this is also one of the uh, purpose of this uh, of this project uh, to analyze to 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 teach them to analyze the visual uh, culture uh, the diversity of visual culture on uh, such samples so uh, many of these uh, pictures many of these posters graphic arts uh, uh, were disseminated uh, in via the social networks almost without the uh, titles without the even the uh, authors the names of their authors it was not uh, uh, important uh, who is the author of uh, uh, one or other uh, poster uh, uh, at this first step it was uh, uh, rather the the main message the the content of the message was important for for us for me uh, then uh, it is a, a really challenge, great challenge to choose uh, from the variety of images uh, uh, some uh, proper, some sufficient image to uh, to express uh, that can to express the main idea uh, as a main image or uh, idea or. Uh, notion or concept of defender or hero or enemy because it is really difficult to, to choose uh, some um, very close uh, close images so uh, it was a problem <laughs> i agree uh, with you and uh, maybe i i tried to show uh, um, diversity of these uh, images and uh, then I, I would like to uh, concentrate uh, on uh, more uh, strictly on the uh, methodological uh, definitions and explanations about this internal that you uh, said internal uh, content of these uh, images as typical typical examples uh, mm, I also uh, choose uh, the uh, mm, uh, the most uh, the most widespread images. They were uh, in different resources and different uh, social networks. Uh, they uh, were well known. They were well known uh, both within the professional community, uh, the illustrators, the graphic artists, and within the uh, databases, the uh, digital resources uh, uh, such as Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, NGO organization, existing only as a virtual uh, resource database. So uh, they, uh, for example, they uh, they uh, gather it uh, 
more than uh, 8,000 of images during uh, graphic images, posters and artworks uh, during this uh, 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 war time. Uh, so it's really a great amount to choose some some uh, proper example. Uh, the other the other question the image of defender uh, and uh, I um, I purposefully exclude these uh, images of our cats uh, at, uh, uh, and other uh, characteristic uh, of our defenders. Uh, uh, because uh, they are more close to the man culture, uh, they looks like memes, uh, and I, uh, I uh, purposefully exclude this uh, great group of different memes because it is quite uh, also it is quite interesting. Um, but my aim was uh, to focus on mainly to focus on the posters and uh, motivating graphic productions, uh, encouraging uh, or motivating the uh, militaries or civilians, or uh, also not uh, only uh, mm, not only following uh, direct uh, the. Uh, information uh, from the TV or uh, some reports, uh, but uh, transformed by the uh, by the artistic imagination and art uh, uh, language uh, and making the uh, more generalized, more generalized images of the some concrete events or concrete uh, peoples uh, mm, or uh, combat some events so uh, it was uh, the uh, it was the uh, made purposefully so <laughs> I, I i'm not sure that i answered uh, on your question but <laughs> thank you thank you so thank much. you thank you dr levitska uh, we have two questions in the chat that i would like to read out i think they're somewhat related so maybe you can take them together the first question is from uh dr michelle Fakos professor of art history at Indiana University. And she says, I was wondering if these artists changed to graphic art as a result of the war and how they feel about it from a creative, not a patriotic point of view. And then a, a, a second question from Mateusz Kapustka says, do you see any relation to the elder iconic paradigms of polemical images created by such embedded artists like, for example, John Hartfield, or do the collage techniques so frequently used for the present iconography of war enemies result rather directly from the possibilities of digital image processing? Thank you, thank you for your questions. I will ask for the question of Dr. Farkas firstly. Uh, this, um, if I uh, uh, if I clearly understand this question, if this artist changed uh, to graphic art uh, from the other field of art uh, uh, production, uh, she mean or, or not? So. Uh, no, I I uh, can say that uh, they uh, uh, that they change uh, specially uh, purposefully to graphic art uh, after the uh, full scale invasion full full scale invasion. Uh, they are mostly graphic artists. They were graphic artists, uh, illustrators, uh, and uh, uh, worked in uh, design sphere of graphic design. Uh, but uh, I uh, I I uh, read uh, some uh, interviews, uh, a lot of interviews, a lot of comments from these artists, and I uh, um, I uh, uh, I can say uh, on one sample of sample of uh, the uh, Mikhailovskop, uh, Lviv graphic artist, uh, uh, he explained uh, his manner uh, because he uh, is uh, very, uh, uh, he is very, um, uh, 
uh, he he knows the Ukrainian iconography and world art very well, and uh, he use uh, uses uh, these uh, uh, schemes, these patterns, uh, these typical uh, uh, patterns uh, from the classical art uh, as well from the icon painting, and uh, making the new imagery, uh, conveying the this war for uh, topics. Uh, of uh, as a history as a chronicle of Ukrainian war he is extremely uh, active especially uh, uh, during the first uh, year of the war the, the last year uh, making almost every day the reaction the visual reaction on uh, some of the uh, war for events uh, but uh, he made this uh, graphic, uh, th these posters, both as a printed version and a digital version, uh, and uh, encourage uh, the audience to share uh, via the social networks. Uh, and uh, he explained uh, his ideas um, and uh, his purpose to uh, to make the uh, the new uh, form. Uh, the new the new content uh, based on the old or ancient forms or ancient patterns uh, it, it is uh, it is really uh, uh, intellectual and uh, deep uh, uh, attitude to the uh, to the art production to the poster as uh, at the ephemeral artwork i i see i guess uh, i like the, his manner and uh, also uh, obviously he is very good and very professional as artist uh, uh, itself so what about the mateusz uh, kapustka question do you see any relation uh, yes, I can. Uh, uh, I can agree that uh, there there are any relations uh, to the elder iconic paradigm uh, paradigms uh, in some of these uh, uh, in some of the samples, and uh, as well this college techniques uh, also is uh, frequently used. Uh, but I uh, uh, I focused uh, mainly on the. Uh, painted or drawing drawing graphic uh, made by authors uh, in traditional way not combining uh, the different techniques except mainly except this tasenko uh, imagery of the agnus dei uh, but uh, it is not uh, a college technique uh, obviously but it is uh, also quite interesting sample as uh, author himself uh, 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 outlined uh, this uh, this uh, experiment of uh, in his career and his uh, uh, artwork. Uh, Stasenko said to me that it it was quite uh, important for him uh, to represent this idea of sacrificing of this victim, uh, comparing uh, or even um, comparing uh, the. Uh, Christian imagery uh, and the uh, suffering of Ukrainian people uh, presenting by the photos, uh, reportage photos, and then transformed into the graphic uh, graphic images on these big, really huge uh, banners uh, uh, in the uh, museum space. Mm, uh, so um, I hope I partly ask partly answered on this on these questions because i see that we have not enough time thank you very much we we probably have time for one more short question uh -huh. if anyone would like to get one more question in Well, then if I may have the privilege of asking one short question, I was I was really uh, fascinated, Dr. Levitska, by your entire presentation, but particularly by the moments where it seemed like the, the, the Ukrainian artists uh, were maybe in some kind of dialogue um, with the with the propagandistic art that that is coming out of of Russia. And I wondered to what extent you're able to kind of track those connections and those conversations, if we can call them that, um, uh, sort of across the, the borders of, of, of art and geography. 
Thank you. It's a very, uh, very uh, relevant question. Uh, I, uh, I was uh, thinking about that uh, uh, for a few, for a few times, but uh, the level of um, uh, uh, the level of hate uh, now in Ukrainian society um does not allow to to make some comparison to 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 build the some this uh, connection between uh, to compare the, uh, the to compare these uh, samples from ukrainian and uh, propaganda obviously it is the part of propaganda i agree absolutely uh, the these propaganda posters uh, from of ukrainian authors uh, and uh, of Russian uh, ones. Uh, I uh, I think that it is not <laughs> scientific. <laughs> it is not good uh, to be so subjective. Uh, we need uh, a little bit time to time distance to to, to rethought to rethought this this material. Uh, this uh, this project is just the first reaction to to order the huge material to to, to explain for ourselves uh, first of all uh, what it mean uh, not only for this moment for for this exactly uh, year or a month but for the future and also to, uh, the rethinking of this historical memory uh, the we uh, we have to find some uh, points, uh, some common points to uh, making Ukrainians to make Ukrainians uh, uh, um, uh, as entity as as a nation, uh, not uh, I mean not ethnical only elements, but uh, as a contemporary political nation. And I uh, guess that. This is the uh, small, uh, small effort to uh, to 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 foster this process, uh, uh, rethinking this uh, visual imagery uh, so uh, uh, actively producing during this war for uh, this period, these years. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just briefly mention as well, Dr. Levitsky, you you mentioned the work of the artist and scholar Irena Varona who yeah. is uh, a continuing scholar in our non-residential program. Uh, she has a wonderful project, The War Diary. I will just put yeah. a link in the chat in case folks are interested. Uh, I, I, thank you. I know mm -hmm. her project, but uh, it does not fit correctly to my uh, to to my uh, the focus of my presentation and i am very grateful for this fantastic opportunity to know more to know new approaches and for the forthcoming uh, uh, forthcoming uh, seminar so i am really happy to advance my knowledge <laughs> thank you Thank you so much for this really enlightening presentation. I think um, it's just so rich. There's many, many more things and aspects mm -hmm. that we could dig into. So thank you so much.